Hey there, YouTube followers. Michael of Penny War Games. Um, so today's Saturday. I'm doing the big reveal of the four items I got, um, which you guys already know, but as before, I'll state it again. Um, I ordered the data cards, the commander, um, or the Crisis of Commander, the Tau Codex, and uh, Warzone Democles Canyon, or yeah, I'm going to say it's Canyon. It's probably in Grenada pronounce something else. It's the supplement for the, um, it's the campaign supplement for, uh, the Tau. So, I have actually had time to, uh, look over and actually read the, the Tau Codex, um, and I haven't actually had a chance to look at the data cards or the Tau Commander, the models themselves, so I'll show you, yeah, the data cards are still in the plastic. So, I I haven't opened them yet. They're still there. Um, just one of those things I haven't gotten around to doing. Um, Tau Commander. It's actually in a lot bigger box than I thought it'd be. It's uh, two models, yeah, because it comes with him and a drone. Um, and I think you can make him into a shield drone or a gun drone. So I'm not, I'll probably make him into a shield drone just because I have a ton of uh, gun drones around. Um, but yeah, um, and it comes, you know, the kit has the variant to where you can make it either um, the regular Crisis Suit Commander or you can upgrade them to the uh, XV-86 Cold Star Battle Suit, um, which is actually a new um, unit or a new upgrade to the, um, the Tau Commander um, as a whole. It gives them a different set of rules. Um, I'll just briefly go over it, because I actually read it um, for him. I'm just flipping to his page. Um, if you upgrade him um, to the Cold Star Battle Suit, he becomes a flying monstrous creature character, um, but does not have the fear rule, the smash rule, or vector strike rule. Um, and, but he also has... Uh, the multi tracker and the black sun filter. So, kind of cool. Um, I'm not really sure. Well, I already know how I'm gonna how I'm gonna play this guy. Um, um, but we'll get into that when the review comes. Um, and Tau Codex. This is the new Tau Codex. Um, a lot of people were saying, "Oh, you don't need to get this." You know, there's um, you know, it's just a reskin. And I respectively disagree, um, because now you have all the units in here. And, again, it's done like this, the codex with pictures and all that. Um, I like the old style of codex better, but I do like this, because, granted, they are showing off their new paint scheme for the towel, which is all white. Oddly enough, there are a few models in here that are still done in brown, um, namely... The, uh, the air support, or the air guys, um, they're flyers, um, and what else, uh, the hammerheads, the hammerhead and the, uh, Skyray gunship are still in brown, uh, the sniper drones, still in brown, um, the best bits still have that blue, you know, the, the brown armor on them, but everything else has been generally done in the new white scheme, um, the crew I don't know how they were ever done before. Um, I mean, they, they look cool. They look, they're very well painted. Um, as far as like some of their HQ choices, um, Dark Strider and Fireblade are in their old color scheme. Um, and I don't know how the Ethereals looked before, um, nor Shadow Sun or Farsight. Um, but I do know the Ethereal picture is of the limited edition one. I'll show that off. Is of the limited edition one, which you can get in their new kit or their new box set, um, and the the commander is of the new commander, and it has the upgraded stat line and what he's going to do. Um, but overall, I really much like this codex. It is very strong, uh, first impression wise. As a, a newcomer to Tau, I'm not really too familiarized with them. I've played against them a handful of times. I will say this, I do have an idea in mind of how I want to play them. Um, I've already pretty much ruled out the mercenaries, like the Crute and the Vest. Well, the Crute, yes. The Vespids, no. Um, 
just reviewing or just going over this. I understand why Vespids are good, um, particularly their weapon um, is a, I think it's strength 5 AP3. So I'm just going to, um, it's a Neutron Blaster, yeah, strength 5 AP3, Assault 1, 18 inch range. Um, it's a very good anti-marine weapon, like, and I look at this codex and I compare it to the Blood Angels codex and the Necron codex. Uh, because those are the two other codexes that I own that I have to compare it to. Um, now I look at this codex and I notice that there isn't, there's only a couple D strength weapons in this codex, and um, there's actually only one. Um, but there's one, that, there's a missile that can upgrade to a D strength with a special rule. Uh, the only D strength weapon is the Pulse Blast Cannon, which you get on the Lord of War choice. Um, the, um, God, the Storm Surge. Um, I think it's Storm Surge. Yeah, the Storm Surge. It's the only one that can get it a, with a, a default, uh, actually. Yeah, it's the, it's the Pulse Blast Cannon, and he comes with it, but it's only, D, uh, D strength if it's 10 inches or less away from him. And granted, it is heavy 2 D strength D AP 1, but it's it's not a D weapon that can go out and touch you. Um, as many of you know, with Marines, they have D weapons like the Volcano Cabin or the Volcano Cannon on a Bane Blade. It's a D weapon that basically goes forever. Doesn't matter where you're on the table, as long as he has line of sight, it's dropping a pie plate of D strength on you. Um, now, granted, there are some really cool weapons here. Generally, I sort of looked at this codex, and the average gun is 18 inch range. Not bad. Um, for the infantry, um, right off the bat, pulse rifles, my man, 30 inch range, rapid fire, strength 5, AP 5, rapid fire. Um, the ethereals got some really unique tricks that they can do um, but yeah just overall this is a strong codex and it's a codex that I, I honestly haven't I've only I've had it since to be honest with you guys I've had it since Friday um, had it since Friday um, but I wasn't allowed to put up a video up until Saturday which is now on Halloween um, because you know it wasn't supposed to hit it's not hitting stores and till today so I was told not to make a video and I understand like they're like hey getting it to you early what your thoughts are you can't make a video until you know that time I was like okay so overall Tau Empire the codex very strong very much like it the formations I really haven't dived into I just haven't given them the time um, and that's and that's because I haven't had a lot of time for the codex yet I haven't had a whole, whole lot of time to dive into it from my perspective, it's very strong. It's, I would, if I had to compare it to um, Necrons and Blood Angels, this codex is better than, well, it, you're, it's two different things. Blood Angels codex is very good at close combat, and that's how Blood Angels are made. They're, they're made for close combat, particularly like Sanguinary Guard and like Death Company. Um, but Blood Angels as a whole are Marines. Um, Tau beat them at the shooting game. No doubt about it. Tau, this codex beats Marines at the shooting game as long as you do it right. Um, granted, a lot of stuff is Ballista Skill 3, a set of 4, or even Ballista Skill 2, but they make up for it. They have nice little tricks with their drones and stuff that can make up for it. Um, a lot of, like, I'm going to say the commander is like Ballista Skill 5, and he's a beast, and, like, there's some, there, I'm... I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to magnetize the guy's weapons then, which is gonna be a pain, but I'm gonna have to do it until I get the right weapon loadout and stuff um, down. So the codex as a whole, I love uh, the the Tau Commander, the new Crisis suit is going to be fun, and I'm gonna have to give him a special paint job. Um, now the base I ordered for him, I do have it in. It's sitting right next to the camera. I don't like it. Um, I'm going to keep it because I'll use that base for something else in the future. Um, I'm just going to have to reorder him a base in a week. Um, the one I really wanted, uh, which is like this marsh 
with some dead trees in it, and I can put realistic water in it. I'm gonna give this guy the best treatment I can. And when I pull out, when I get to making him tomorrow or Monday, uh, when I pull out his base, I'm gonna actually measure it up to the one I got to make sure I got the right one. So enough with the codex. Um, as you know, first impression, I love it. I dived into this expansion on my lunch break today, guys, because I didn't have time for it yesterday because I was so into the codex. I was like, oh my gosh, the codex, the codex. You know, I, I had never really looked at a Toei codex. I never had given it time. And I'm really looking forward to reading the fluff, too, because I'm Salamander player. And I read all the fluff in the codex. I read their books, which I haven't done in a while. But you, you get my drift. I read the fluff. Same with the Polenicals. Right? Um, and the Necrons, I, I love the fluff. And that's the whole reason why I really got into those two armies. Tau, I love them aesthetically. And I love how they're a shooting army, which is fun for me. Um, and I'm really enjoying painting them. Trust me, I'm working on the ethereal model I have now. Um, and I am I got his skin down, and I love how he plays, or paints. Um, so, the expansion. And, wow, am I disappointed with this. Now, I only got into the rules portion of this, and I... It's a big set, too. Two, uh, two books. Uh, one is one is the actual. Um, and it comes in. Yeah, it's two books and this nice thing. Even though I've already dented it because I brought it to work so I can read it. Um, I have not gone into Canyon, the uh, supplement, like the actual campaign, and the story and the fluff. And I just totally messed up something I was working on right there. I have not gotten into what is actually going on and how Shadow Sun actually fits into this. Um, the Shadow Sun Coalition and like I really have not gotten into the this part of it. And how the Raven Guard and the and the um, White Scars are in it and how the Imperial Knights play into this. I haven't gotten into that. So with that said I'm giving that, the actual expansion part, this, a pass. Um, I'm passing on this. Uh, there will be a review up for this coming up. All this stuff will have reviews. Here comes the part where I'm having the difficulty with Canyon, is the rules. And mainly because of the formations. And I only looked at the Tau formations because I was not particularly happy with a few things. I needed to look at this. One, you know, I read GW's thing. They're like, oh, if you own the old codex, you don't need to get the new codex because Canyon has all the rules that you need uh, for the new models. And I will say this. It does. It has the new commander uh, uh, rules. It has the new ethereal rules because the apparently the ethereal changed. Um, it has the new strike team rules. The Breacher Team rules, uh, which are your Fire Warriors, it's just, do you want them as a Breacher Team with a limited gun, or do you want them as a Strike Team with a 30-inch gun? Um, and vice versa, you know, it comes with that. Um, and it comes with the rules for the Battle Suits, which I didn't know, I didn't know Crisis Suits changed. I didn't know, like, I guess they went down in points or something. Um, because Crisis Suits are 22 points now. And the Crisis Suit Bodyguards are 32 points, which is just a Crisis Suit Commander, like their leader. Um, it's just the Bodyguards get some WYSIWYG type stuff. Like you can make them all with a 2 plus armor save if you really want to. Make them 55 fucking points of ice. Um, it comes with the rules for the Ghost Kill, which I already have in a um, White Dwarf. Like, and it comes with the storm surge and then it has formations in here um, and now here's my problem with this if you're going to make a new codex GW why put the rules in the expansion make the players buy the new codex make them buy it I bought it because I didn't own it but when you go out and say oh you don't need to buy the codex if you're already a talent player just buy the expansion as all, yeah, you're putting rules for models that already exist in the bloody codex in your expansion. That'd be one thing. 
if like there were special like units in here. Like, say the ghost kill wasn't a codex item. Say it was only a supplement item, or the storm surge was only a supplement item. I could get that. I could understand. If you want to play with these models, you have to buy the supplement type of stuff. Make more money. Hey, I'm a capitalist type of guy. I get it. As far as the formations go, um, a lot of them are the same. The f I noticed immediately, and I haven't read any of these formations. Um, I just noticed by the pictures alone that these are a bunch of freaking reprints. I don't. I think maybe one or two of these are different, and that's it. Um, I don't. I honestly don't think the optimized stealth. Uh, one, uh, which is the ghost kill in the six stealth suits, um, or in the regular rule book. Um, the hunter, uh, Karad, I believe is in the regular rule book. The retaliation Karad, I believe is in the regular rule book. Um, the heavy retribution one is in the regular rule book. The infiltration one is in the regular rule book. And I'm just flipping this. The fire support, the fire base support, which is a two broadside teams, or two units of broadsides and a riptide. That is in the regular rulebook, and it is ridiculously painted in brown still. Why couldn't they put white models in there? The armor lord. Basically, it's the three hammerheads and sky ray gunship. That formation's in the regular rulebook. The aircast support which is your flyers, is in the regular rulebook. The only one that, well, nope, and this one's in there too. The Mercs, the Mercenaries, which is the four crew units and the two Vespid units, that is in the regular rulebook. The only thing that's in here that's not in there is the Tidewall rules. Um, the Tidewall shield line rules. That is the only thing that is in, as far as rules go, that is in this book that is not in that book. As far as I can tell, as far as formations go, other than the one that has, um, uh, what, what did I say it was? Um, it was the optimized stealth one. And I honestly think there's one in here that's not in here, which is the three, oh no, no, because that's actually just a squad of them. Um, never mind. I was going to say it's the three, um, ghost kills, but you can take them in squats of three, so that's not a formation. Um... Yeah, it, this really sort of let me down. Like, the, the tide wall is cool and all, guys. Um, I haven't even looked at it as a whole. The model is cool. Um, I like that they're going to be selling, and I think it's actually up on the website, that there, that there will be chunks of this thing that you can use. Um, because there are rules for chunks of this thing. Um, you know, you got the shield line. You have the drone port. Which is why do you have that thing? You have the the tide wall gun rig, which has its massive rail gun, um, the tide wall gun fort, um, and then you have um, the tide wall defense network, which is all the pieces slammed together. Um, you know, I for seventy five dollars. To be honest, guys, I think I got ripped off. Um, I would have been happier spending an extra ten dollars, or I would have been happier honestly buying a ghost kill for this price. I mean, I, for seventy five bucks, I should have bought a ghost kill. Um, and now granted, that's just the rules and the formations. Um, in this, so, and that's just the towel ones, and that's where I'm saying is like I'm take take this with a grain of salt. Um, I have not looked at the space ring ones at all. I mean, at all. There's, um, I'm looking right here. There's um, Raven Guard tactical objectives. Now, there, there could be something else in here that I haven't looked at. It's the Tau War Gear thing. Um, something I had read said that there was new relics for the Tau in this. So I don't know. Um, the Raven Guard had their own tactical objectives. Granted, they had their own cards coming out too. Um, so, and then they have their, uh, their own relics here, the Raven Guard, which is cool. 
which is cool. Uh, Raven Guard have their own Warlord table finally. Um, nice. I'm glad to see that. So, I'm not a Raven Guard player though. Um, you know, and they have their own formations, uh, which I've not looked at at all. Um, but the Shadow Force is their box set one, which is cool. Um, I do plan on getting that. That, and whether I make it Raven Guard or not. It's going to be cool, because um, I need all those models for my Blood Angels, which is cool. Um, they, you know, I'm just looking at this as I go, guys, and this is going to be a long review, so get over it right now. Um, Raven Guard needed some love, and I will say this too, the White Scars needed some love too. Um, so, I would love to see in the future that Salamanders get one, <laughs> like... Bring me some salamanders. I will definitely buy that box at GW. Make it happen. I will dive deep into getting me a, the Space Marine Codex and do whatever I have to do to get me some salamander action back on. Um, but yeah, the Raven Guard, Raven Guard stuff looks. I'm just looking at it picture wise. Looks pretty cool. Um, particularly like their Shadow one that the kit has. Um, the Blade Wing Assault Brotherhood that looks kind of cool just aesthetically. Uh, Shadow Strike Kill Team, <laughs> that looks cool. Um, I, that has two to four squ uh, scout squads, which I'd never take. Uh, you know, I'd figure out a way to make some scout squads really cool. And one to three Vanguard veteran squads, yeah, that's cool. Um, and then their big one is the Pension or the Penon Battle Demi Company, whatever the hell you. I don't know how the hell you sell you, but whatever. Um, yeah, the Sons of Korax, and they're like. I don't know, like, this This is actually making me think that this is worth it. Sorry, guys, my son is my eye. Again, I've been having eye problems all week. Alright, so we're getting on the White Scars. They have their own, actually, you know, they, they have their own cards that came out. Um, so they have that. They have their own They have their own relics in here, which I haven't dived into. They have their own Warlord traits. Um, from what I remember with Raven Guard, or White Scars, is there a bike-focused army? Um, and Raven Guard was always like a jump pack-focused army. Like, Raven Guard was attack from the shadow. Uh, White Scars was run up in their face with bikes and speeders and stuff like that. Um, so, naturally, their formations have a lot of bikes in them and a lot of fast stuff. So, yeah, there's a lot of fast stuff. And I don't think Raven Guard actually got a lot. Or Stern. Uh, White Scars. They have their Stormlands Demi or Stormlands Battle Demi Company. It doesn't look like a lot, just from the picture. Like it doesn't look like a lot of models, but I could be wrong. Uh, their Hunting Force looks like a lot of Scout bikes and some regular bikes. Uh, of course, they have the um, what I would call their Scout squads, uh, Land Speeders, yes, and Scout squads. Their, their spear tip strike that looks like it could be a lot of models. Uh, although now I'm looking at it, no. Um, White scars seem to like just from the formation thing. It looks like they got shat on. Like they didn't. Raven guard seem to have had a lot more love. And for some reason, I get the feeling that White scars were just sort of thrown into this whole mess at the end. Like oh. You know, Raven Guard wasn't that big. You know, we did we did a lot for him, but the White Scars need some help too. Here, here's some cards and here's some formations. Just shut up. Like that's I, I'm I'm I get that feeling. Now I could be wrong. So please, you know, I could be very wrong. Um, if you're a person that loves that plays Raven Guard and has Tau, Canyon's the Canyon is an expansion for you. Um, and those, now from what I've been told, and this really sort of pisses me off, um, that the two box sets that came out, uh, Shadow, Shadow Force and the Tau one, they, they actually have supplements for this. Like they have formations for this campaign. And there's narrative in, the, like, there's a book that comes with each one of those. And each book is different. And each book has different formations. And that sort of pisses me off, because now it's like, okay, I spent 75 bucks on your book. I don't want your models. Like, I'm sorry, Games Workshop. The Tau one, I have all the models out of that. 
And the only one that I don't have is your special limited edition ethereal model. It has another see here's my problem is it has another Pathfinder set. It has a piranha, it has cell suits, and it has the ethereal thing. Okay. I have all those models. I have a different ethereal model, and I actually like mine a little bit better because he's pewter, um, because he was metal. Um But yeah, I I really don't want another Pathfinder. I have a Pathfinder set on the table that I haven't even built. <laughs> um, piranhas just me overlooking on them. I, I think they're I think they'd be worth it. They're forty points a piece. So you add ten points, give them fusion blaster, and they're fifty points a piece. Take them in squads of five. Two hundred fifty points of a squad. Uh, I've been hearing a lot of shit about them, and people don't say, "Oh, Michael, they're not worth it." And why does my phone keep going off? It's probably stupid video games. Yeah. Clash of Clans and um, Boom Beach. Um, you know, I, I get a, I've been hearing a lot of flack about the Piranhas. I think they're good. I don't, I haven't even, like, the rules wise, they're cool. Like, oh, you know, 50 points for a vehicle. So I don't know. I don't know their armor values. I don't know how many pull points. Whatever. I'll, I'll dish into that when I get into the review of the codex. I'm just, I, I guess I have a bad taste in my mouth. Because I'm now, I will say this about Canyon, the rules that all the Space Marine formations in here can be taken by any Codex Space Marine chapter. So in Codex Space Marines, you have Salamanders, Ultramarines, White Scars, Raven Guard, Black Templars, and basically anything else that you want to make. And there's more in there. I know I'm forgetting. Um, Iron Hands are in there. Um, so if you play out of Codex Space Marines, the formations for the Space Marines in here, in Canyon, can be used by any Space Marine faction out of that Codex. So basically this Canyon says, if you play Blood Angels or Dark Angels or Space Wolves or Grey Knights, you can't take these formations. And that's kind of cool if you're a generic Space Marine player. Um, I'm not. I play Blood Angels. Um, I would get into the generic Space Marines if Salamanders got some love. Hell, I'd buy a Salamander Codex. I don't give a shit. Like, boom, bring it on, baby. Salamanders and Blood Angels were my two chapters that are Space Marine chapters I always really liked. Um, so, and I'm going to throw Alpha Legion into this because I believe they're good guys. So, Alpha Legion, I, I'm probably, if if I had to make two more Space Marine armies, and they would be out of the generic Space Marine book, I would make an Alpha Legion one, and I'd do Salamanders. And I'd just make some crazy thing for Alpha Legion and just make them all look the same. And Because, granted, I played them in Chaos, and I didn't like I didn't like them how they were in Chaos. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, guys. Um... Out of the four things I got, I'm really happy with three of them. Um, I can see, I can see the value though in Canyon. Now that I'm thinking about it and sitting here talking with you guys, or talking to you guys, um, Canyon I think is a great thing for it. I'm just sort of ticked that I got a lot of the same uh, formations for the Tau and the Tau Codex. Um, it's like I just sort of was like, oh, I could have bought a Ghost Kill. Yay! Or I could have spent an extra ten dollars and got a Riptide instead of this thing. Um. So yeah, I I I, I don't know. I have a bad taste in my mouth right now for this for Canyon. Um, I'm pretty sure there's what there's some stuff in there that I'm overlooking. Um, I'm pretty sure the Riptide wall, like their their thing, is probably worth it. I I'm pretty sure like. Like this book right here, it's worth its weight. Um, just particularly for the Riptide Wall rules, because I don't think the damn thing came with rules when it first came out. Everyone didn't know what the hell they were doing, so you had to buy seventy-five dollars worth of rules to to play it. And you know, I as far as the Tau go in here, I don't know. They they might have new. Um, as far as I know, they could have new warlord traits in here or something. Um, 
it really should. There is one thing I'm gonna say. This it disappoints me that Shadow Sun isn't in a or Shadow Sun. She is not in a formation in this because this is supposed to be like her. Oh, you know, she's been doing this, and you know, she's the great thing. Okay, well then put her in a bloody formation. Like, do it. <laughs> Yeah, give her some WYSIWYG formation that makes her so great with the stealth teams and Pathfinders. Um, it just seems like that was a great opportunity that got mis that got misused, particularly in the optimized stealth one. Like, really, you couldn't say you got to take Commander Shadow Sun uh, two. I would I would have said two to three units of uh, stealth suits and one to three ghost kills. Um, like, really, you couldn't have done that. Um, granted, she could have gone in the infiltration one, too. Um, although I would have taken out that piranha. But yeah, um, I would have replaced her for the piranha. Like, that's kind of cool. Like, and I'm wondering if you can't put her in these formations. Like, and that's something I gotta look into, guys. Um, is Shadow Sun will be the next, uh, I just like the model, and from reading the rules, I like her even more, so she's going to be the next lord I buy, which will bring me up to three lords, which is good, because then I'll have ethereal, uh, a stealth suit, uh, like, yeah, a stealth suit, uh, one, and then I'll have my commander, which is, because I'm, I got a feeling how I'm going to play Tau is I'm going to be running a lot of uh, crisis suits and a lot of stealth suits. Um, mix in Riptides and Ghost Kills and Fire Warriors. Fire Warriors, I'm going to say this right now, I love the original Fire Warriors, the Strike Team, give, them, give me that Pulse Rifle. They come with it now. Like, I don't think it's an upgrade. Like, it's 9 points, 30 inch gun. Strength 5, AP 5, Rapid Fire. Love it. I love me some regular guys. Now, the Breacher guys, I haven't looked at, even though I haven't been uh, the White Dwarfs. I just have gotten around to look at them, so Alright guys, so starting tomorrow sometime on Sunday, November 1st, I'm going to be giving an in-depth review of Tau Codex. Um, and then eventually I'm going to move, uh, that will probably take me the better part of the week. I'm going to try to do a video a day. Um, my schedule looks pretty good to where I could do a video a day. If not, I'm just going to crank them out uh, on Monday, just get it all done, and just start releasing them slowly throughout the week. Uh, as I'm sitting here uh, working on the commander, because I'm going to give him one hell of a paint job. And I'm going to find him the base that I want, and I'm going to do with him what I want. I already have some ideas of how I want to build him, um, which I'll get into, the, which tomorrow will be a Tau Codex Review HQ Choices. Um, and I'm going to do it choice by choice, and then I'm going to, as at the end, I'm going to do an overall review. And by the end of it, I hope to give Canyon a better, like, actually, for the fluff-wise, I really want to, I'm really looking forward to diving into the fluff, like, why are the Tau there, and all that. Um, and hopefully I can give a better impression of the rules, so maybe Canyon won't be that, out of, out of the four items I ordered, Canyon is not that tasting that well, so. Alright, guys, this is going on 35 minutes, so I'm going to sign out, because i got to be working on my ethereal, and... I really, really want to open up this commander set. So, all right, guys, this is Michael of Painted War Games. I'm signing out, and as always, keep gaming.